Every day, you essentially pay your dues by doing the harder thing when it's the right thing to do. Good. Jordan, hello. How are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you again. I feel like our paths are just keep crossing randomly at events across the, the country. Jim I love it. I, love it. <laughs> I know. Shout out to Jessica the last time I think we bumped into each other. But uh, what has life been like since uh, I think I saw you last at Nationals? Oh, it's, you know, as busy as ever, but just, I mean, every day is exciting and challenging and amazing. And, um, yeah, we've, been, we've been working hard and working hard every single day. So, um, I wouldn't prefer it any other way. Yeah. Right. Not to date the episode, but we're definitely in the thick of preseason right now. And I feel like this is the, it's like weird. It's like the calm before the storm or like media wise, it's like everyone's worried about world. And like, that's so exciting. And like, slowly in the background college like coaches are just grinding right and teams yeah. are grinding to get ready but then all of a sudden like december comes it's like boom we're in season in january and so it's it, it explodes into popularity but i'm sure you're extremely tired behind the scenes right <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing okay although i you know i tell the team every year around this time like october is the most important month because this is when you know you start putting all the routines together but then mm. pretty soon thanksgiving hits and then christmas and then boom we're starting yeah. season so like October is so important and so vital. And um, yeah, we're just, we're grinding it out over here. Yeah. I remember like in college, like the blink of an eye, you go from October to you're standing saluting at your first meet and you're like, whoa, what happened? Like, <laughs> wait a minute, what happened? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to ask a lot of questions selfishly to help viewers kind of learn your your path here. And obviously you yeah. have quite the, quite the trajectory. You've made it to where you are now. And um, the first thing I think a lot of people want me to ask you is you've gone through quite a journey of super high level athlete to coaching in more of assisting role. And now you've been like thrown into a head coaching position. And I feel like it's probably a whirlwind for you going across that whole spectrum. I'm curious about what has changed or what's so uh, what's different about all those things. Oh my gosh, so much has changed. I feel like in, when, when I hear you say that, in some ways, I feel like I'm two completely different people, like the <laughs> athlete Jordan and the coach Jordan. Yeah. But at the same time, there's so much crossover. And I would say the main crossover is just um, like who I am at the, the core of my being and just my work ethic and how I approach life and challenges. Um, but, you know, being an athlete versus coaching athletes are just, completely different skill sets right. and um, completely different challenges. So I quickly learned when I first started coaching that what worked for me as an athlete would work for maybe one out of <laughs> all 20 on the team. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of like a, a shock to the system at first, but um, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's different not being able to actually do the the physical work and more mm. so trying to figure out how to motivate people to want to do that work. Um, but it's, that's like, that's the part I love about coaching is figuring out how to take what I learned from my mindset and my competitive drive and figure out how to teach them that, but teach them in a way that resonates with, with each of them, which yeah. is different across the board. Um, but just, you know, a lot of, a lot of differences, but you know, at the core of it, I feel like I'm still the same person. I'm still just so goal oriented and just so dedicated to, to, to what my goals are, what the team's goals are. And yeah. every day it's, it's intensity and it's, it's fun. Yeah. I'm curious if you have the same from me, which is, I was such a kind of a control freak as an athlete in college that when I started coaching and I was on the other side of the mat on the bars, I was like, Oh, I just, I want it for you so bad. Like I struggled so much as a coach early on about like not being the person doing, but caring so much still, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. that's definitely an adjustment. But, you know, culturally in our in our program, that's what we're trying to build. We're trying to figure out how to get them to want it just as badly as the coaches want it, because, you know, if, if the team if it's not the team's goals and the team's um, motivated to do it, it, it doesn't really, you know, make a difference if I want it. <laughs> yeah. And sure. And given your high level background, do you struggle like skill wise or like mental competitive, like, you know, strategies to kind of deal with pressure? Is it like what worked for you? Like you said, when you were like, Oh, I could just do this skill or I could feel it out. Like somebody else is like a visual learner or there's someone who's like, I don't understand at all what you mean by like what you're saying. Is that struggle or is that not there? Um, I would say less than a struggle. It's more just like trial and error. Yeah. You know, for me, um, competing and, and the pressure and being able to deal with the pressure was like really, really natural. Um, that was where I thrived. And we have, you know, some athletes that are like that. And we have other athletes that really have to do more of the mental training and figure mm -hmm. out how to really control the nerves and turn the nerves into excitement. And, um, it's more of a process in that way versus we have what we call gamers that, you know, <laughs> yeah. 
they might struggle in practice, but I know as soon as they salute the routine, I know what to expect and they're going to go out there and just crush it. So there's a little bit of everything. And I think um, just because we have, you know, 18 student athletes, we're going to see a little bit of all of that, but mm -hmm. it's kind of trial and error, you know, figuring out and having conversations about what's working for you, what's not working, what's going on in your head, what are you feeling? And yeah. that's the part of coaching I love is just helping helping them figure it out for themselves and kind of guiding them along the way versus me just prescribing one thing saying, Hey, make this work for you. Yeah. And that's something that's universally important across, you know, club, college, whatever is that the ability to be individual, right. With your athlete in front of you. And I feel like I hear that from great coaches over and over, which is like the coach is not just being like, like you said, here's the assignment, everyone do it. This is what we're doing. It's like actually communicating like, well, this person needs this, this person needs this kind of style. Do you find that that's more prominent in college or did you feel as though that was something that just good coaches have universally? Um, you know, I'm not really sure. I feel like, you know, it's easier to dictate change than it is to motivate change. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of coaches kind of slip into that, that mode of, you know, I'm just going to have my system and I'm going to make sure that they execute my system. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to slip into that. But my personal philosophy is, you know, which is more difficult. It takes a little more time, but I think it's more worthwhile and it's more effective in the long run is, is motivating change and figuring mm. out like, if I want this athlete to, um, create this new habit, you know, I want them to do this every single time, um, they come into the gym, then I got to figure out how to motivate them to want to do it for themselves and teach them. This is why I want you to do it. And this is how it's going to help you. And, um, I don't know. I think you see a lot of every different type of coach out there. It's easier to slip into dictating than it is to mo to motivate. Um, but that's what I'm really passionate about and what I, I challenge myself to do every single day as a coach. Yeah. And I, I can definitely say I'm not going to go anywhere near what programs it is, but like sometimes you see coaches trying to put a square peg in a round hole, right? Like <laughs> this person does not handle pressure well, but it's like stand up there and do it now every time or other people who are like love that pressure. And it's more of a laid back. And I feel like it's so important to be able to read the room a little bit and understand what athletes need within limits, right? Nobody, everybody's right. not like on their own path, but um, being able to kind of pivot a little bit is crucial. And I feel like sometimes in the heat of particularly like college gymnastics, where there's so much going on, it's hard to sometimes be able to take a step back and be like, okay, this person needs this, this person needs this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I think, you know, every, our program, our goal is we've got to have, you know, a, a certain amount of structure and discipline and there has to be standards mm -hmm. and expectations across the board. Um, but if, if you're having trouble figuring out how to, how to make that happen, like we're going to help you figure it out. We're going to guide mm -hmm. you. We're going to challenge you. It's not going to be, Hey, we're going to do it for you. Um, but we're, we're invested in each of our student athletes and helping them figure out how to meet that standard and mm -hmm. meet that expectation. And then not only that, but, but help them understand why it's important and how mm -hmm. it's going to affect them as not just an athlete, but then later in life when they're, you know, in their careers and they're going to take everything they learn from gymnastics and apply it. Yeah. And another thing I think I'm curious that I noticed a lot as my club career to college is like when you go to college, you have so many resources of other people. There's strength coaches, nutritionists, mental sports, performance, stuff like that. I'm wondering what your process was moving into that environment or maybe in your club. It's like, okay, I got all these things I got to do and this is on me to kind of take care of it versus you step to somewhere like UCLA or Arkansas and you're like, whoa, I have a lot of people to help me out here. And I'm wondering if like what that was like for you to, cause a lot of gym is coaches, like at the club level struggle to work with other professionals or to try to find people yeah. that might know something they don't. Yeah. You know, it's just so, it's so different and it's so hard to compare yeah. because our student athletes are adults, you know, yeah. they're at the tail end of their career. So on one hand, they do require a, a lot, of, <laughs> you know, I think there, there should be a little bit more um, collaboration at the club yeah. level, just with things like strength coaches and physical therapists and sports psychologists. And some of these resources are really um, important and could be really useful, but I think it's even more necessary once they get here because um, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot on a club athlete's plate, but there's even more on a college athlete's plate. Right. We've got five classes tutoring for all of those classes. They've got practice weights. Yep. Um, they've got rehab and massage and, and not only that, but they're, they're trying to be normal college students at the same time and have fun and have a social life. And so there's, there's a lot on their plate and it's not only that, but I think college is four of the most transformative years in anyone's life. Mm. You know, you learn, you're figuring out who you are, what you want to do with your life, you know, what kind of people you want to surround yourself with. And that's just a totally different challenge that you, than what you experience, I think, um, at a younger age. And so the resources are so important um, across the board, whether it be from a psychological standpoint to a physical, mm -hmm. you know, um, athletic training standpoint. Um, and we always tell our athletes, 
you have all the resources here, but it's up to you to utilize them. It's up yeah. to you to take advantage of them. And sometimes that's the hardest part is getting them to understand like it's okay to use the resources. It's not a weakness to need to go see a counselor or to need to to do rehab. That's that's actually a strength that shows that you're taking ownership of the things that you might need to do um, and just taking control of it. And so um, that's, I think that's the hardest part sometimes is motivating them to, yeah. to use the resources. Right. When you have so much on your plate and time is like, you're rushing around and you have so much stuff you got to get in. It's tough to, to get advantage of all of it. Right. Yeah, exactly. And something I actually selfishly want to ask you is that, and please, we can step past if you want, but like the, the, concept of gymnast lifting weights in college is universal. Like a lot of programs lift, but obviously you came from a different culture. And I came from a culture where my coaches taught me that like, you should stay so far away. But I see personally, we have so many club athletes that come to us and once a week we'll lift in the off season. I don't know if maybe your, your views have changed or like, if you could go back in your club career, would you try to add some, would you not like, do you feel as though it's, it's only a college thing or what are your thoughts there? Yeah. I mean, from what I remember I did in club, it was, you know, we had different kind of phases of yeah. conditioning. You know, obviously when we're competing, it was more of a maintenance phase. Yep. Um, and it was usually like lower weight in the gym and more like plyometrics and yep. just things that were going to maintain strength. And when I was in my off season, I, I actually did a lot of weight stuff, but kind of disguised as gymnastics conditioning. Sure, so sure. I remember doing dips on the um, P bars with yep. a 45 pound weight. And right. so it was, you know, I, I, while I didn't go to like an actual gym and yep. have a strength coach, I was doing some weight. Yeah. Um, and so I always try to remember that. And with our, our team here, it's like, we have to hit it from all sides. So sure. we've got to hit, we've got to hit plyometrics. We've got to do you know, enough strength, but we've got to make sure we're getting the cardio in. And this year we started incorporating swim workouts. So mm. it's a little bit lower impact. And mm -hmm. we, we literally do so many different types of conditioning, but the main, the main thing that is um, important is what, when we're up in the weight room, like everything we're doing makes sense for our sport right. and for gymnastics. And I think it's so important that, that strength coaches understand the, the, the athletes and the, the, particular, um, nuances of the sport. Yeah. Um, I think about something like a, like a, you know, a back squat is that what it's called where you put the bar yeah, yeah. there. It's like, I feel like a weightlifter might put all the weight into their heels when they do that. Whereas like if we're landing on our heels and on yeah. distance, that's probably not going to stick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she works really hard. Our strength coach works, works really hard to understand our sport and make sure that what we're doing in the weight room makes sense. And it's, it's all about injury prevention and, um, making sure we can get faster and stronger. So I don't know, I'm kind of rambling, but it's okay. No, trust me. You're, you're, you're right on line with, I think, cause I think I'm viewed as someone who is like, maybe the pendulum has swung so hard that like I'm a big promoter of it, but there's such a big difference between sports performance and bodybuilding, right? There's such a difference between a baseball program and a gymnastics program. And even as someone who's the most biggest advocate, particularly in the club level is that people would only do it one to two days per week in their maximum off season. And in season, it's like, this is go do gymnastics. So it's something that I see like, I'll, I'll kind of die on the hill that in five years, I feel like a lot of club athletes will start to do it more. And it's yeah. just fun to see the college programs do it because everyone looks up to the college programs like, oh my God, I can't believe they lift. Like maybe I could try that like once a week, you know, and try something out like that. Yeah. I am seeing when, as I'm recruiting, I'm hearing a lot more of club athletes that are either getting personal trainers or they're doing some more cross training, which is, which is great. I think sometimes it depends on your club or what equipment totally. you have or what your coach's totally. philosophy is. And um, as long as you can, you know, have enough energy and remain healthy. I don't see, I think it's a, it's a great thing because then it won't be such a shock to the system when you get to college and we're doing lots of different types of conditioning. Yeah. It's funny that I view, you know, like the years of like 10 to 14 in puberty, the same as like the end stage of college, which is like, you can only get so many reps and so many hard impacts before you start to kind of get cranky joints and stuff. So it's like a huge opportunity to keep making progress when maybe there's not as much volume that can be put on an athlete who's higher risk. But, you know, we see, 30 to 40 college in, in club gymnasts each summer to, to train with us. And like, they're like, this is not at all what I thought, you know, it was, I thought it was CrossFit. I thought it was this, and I literally treat CrossFitters. So I get it, but like, there's just, they're very eye opening because we have great strength coaches who have taken the time to understand gymnastics and yeah. work on it. So yeah, not the, not to belabor the point, but working with great strength coaches and, and I guess giving it a chance is probably the happy medium there. Right. Yes. I totally agree. Yeah. So switching gears into something, which is really cool to see is I, I personally feel as though like the last five years, NCAA has like rocket shift, right? Whether it's media, whether it's not, but I feel like you and Arkansas are in the thick of it. And you're part of like a really exciting time when it's like, everyone's really watching a lot more. The first thing is I'm curious, maybe why you think that's happening. And then we'll kind of go on to the, the, the harnessing the energy side of things. Yeah. Well, I think it's a few things. Um, I think, you know, now that NIL is, is a thing, you know, we were able to have 
Olympians from this past quad be able to go and then, you know, compete in college gymnastics, right. which brings a lot of, you know, everybody is a gymnastics fan every four years. Mm. When the Olympics comes around. It's one of the most viewed sports in the Olympics. And so I think that crossover from the athletes competing in the Olympics to then going to college teams helped significantly. Um, I think another thing is, you know, we've gotten a lot more TV exposure and, and we have a great product for TV. Yeah, right. And it really started with SEC Friday Night Heights, um, which is, it's so cool that, that we get to be in that conference and really be a part of that. But, you know, the fan bases have really grown in, in the last few years, I feel like, because we're on TV more and it's more accessible for people to watch. Um, and the other thing too, I think, you know, I can speak for myself and probably some other coaches that we've worked really, really hard to, to build the exposure and to, um, and to make a gymnastics meet truly, a, an event and an experience. Yeah. And I yeah. said, you know, I say that's like 30% of my job is, is planning our home meets and how to make it like really a, a show. Um, yeah. and from a marketing standpoint, how we promote it and social media, it's just, it's, that's one of my favorite parts about what I get to do is figure out that whole puzzle. Mm. Um, so we've worked really hard on that as well. And I think, you know, we're, we're just developing more and, and cultivating more gymnastics fans. And I just think what, wh how amazing is that, that, you know, our student athletes and just women in general are getting way more opportunities uh, because of all of those things. It's just really cool to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited and fascinated to see one is maybe it's NIL, but I think also too, it's a hat tip to the quality of, you know, coaching in the NCAA now, which is, you know, you, three three of the team members for the worlds right this friday not to date the episode are from ncaa and like how amazing is that like 10 years ago that's a tough thing to have somebody bounce between those two things and so to see the caliber of coaching at the ncaa but also the competitive nature rise where you're you can do double doubles and you can be rewarded for it and stuff like that i think as someone who obviously comes from the men's side where the college system is such a feeder it, that's really exciting for me to see because if now if 12 year old you know whoever can see someone at 22 doing elite and national team it's like it changes a lot of how we treat those maybe earlier years and that's very exciting from a performance longevity but also a health point of view as someone who obviously works with a lot of athletes you know yeah absolutely and i'm, I'm kind of jealous they get to have the best <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to bring up a sense of yeah <laughs> Okay, I'll bring it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, they get they get to do both now, which is so amazing. I'm so happy for them, but I'm a little bit jealous. And yeah, you think about like after the last Olympics, then you've got SUNY and Jade and Jordan, and you know that just didn't happen before because you, you had a split. You had the ones yeah. that wanted to go pro, and you had the ones that wanted to do college, and you could do both. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm extremely excited for you know obviously the next quad and whatever else. But like ten years from now the conversations we're able to have with like, well, 22, 24, 26, not to mention like the Ellie Blacks and the Downies of the world who are just crushing it. Like imagine being 30 years old and doing gymnastics, my ankles would fall apart, but um, <laughs> have that looking down as a coach, right? So think about a new coach who has their first maybe junior elite or whatever. You're like, oh, wait a minute. It's a very different 10 year path. Then we got to get onto this team and do whatever and kind of then have to make that hard decision between pro and college, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The next piece of this is that what, I, I mean, I've heard of the famous sorority cookie stores, but what do you do to build like a brand, right? Cause I feel like that's what you're saying is that you're excited about building a brand of Arkansas gymnastics to make home meets mm -hmm. exciting and to do stuff. And a lot of programs are looking at places like yourself and others like, wow, that's really cool. We want to continue to harness, you know, that opportunity for us. So are there other things that you're doing that are kind of more on the day to day that help to kind of get exponential growth of the meets and things yeah. like that? Well, I think, you know, the, the like roots of there's like all those things, right? Like promoting the meets and going to sororities and getting more butts in stands. But like the root of it, I really feel like what we've been doing since the first day I stepped on campus is um, obviously we've been attacking culture um, really, yeah. really hard. And so I think the stuff that we're putting out in social media is really intentionally authentic. And people are starting to see and be a fan of Arkansas because mm. what we're putting out there is really true to us. It's not just social media content. It's, right. it's an actual reflection of the people here and our coaching staff and our team. Um, and and I, that, that, I think that's at the root of it. But, you know, just in every way, I, I really try to focus on um, building the buzz around our program yeah. and uh, putting out content that helps people get to know our student athletes and our team and will it not only just attract recruits but just really tailor to our fan base here in Fayetteville in the northwest Arkansas um but I don't know I think it just it takes a lot of work you know some coaches are not willing to to put a lot of work into that marketing side and it's not 
it's not easy. It takes a lot of time um, on my part and really yeah. getting out in the community, but I love it. I'm so motivated to do it because at the end of the day, it just, it's more exposure for the program. And then right. when we see the crowds and in Barnhill and in Bud Walton, it just makes it all worth it. So it's just a lot of, a lot of work and intention and a lot of creative discussions about how we can promote this program and um, really be authentic in how we promote it. Yeah, and I think you're, you're speaking to culture and work and these things are integrally tied, right? Which is like a great culture and a productive culture is not happening by accident. And so that's kind of my next question is, obviously the last five years for you guys has continued to be really successful and really forward driving momentum. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, quite a coaching staff is helpful there, but are there things that you're doing within the gym to try to promote that, whether the values you believe in or kind of go out of your way? Because a lot of club coaches are desperately looking for things to help their culture but also teams struggle with this too as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a million things that we're doing and <laughs> it's been, it's been um, really just a, a process over the last, you know, four, this is the start of our fourth year. Yep. Um, it hasn't been perfect and it's, it's taken some patience um, and just, you know, patience with getting buy-in. And that was one thing that we really felt like we got the first two years was buy-in and trust from the, the girls and the team. And mm. now, you know, now we're at a place where I've really felt like this year we can focus on cultivating leaders and really mm. teaching leadership. And it kind of hit me after last year, you know, I, I keep trying to force leaders and leadership on our team. And I, I was like, wait, how do how, why can I just expect them to know how to be a good leader? Sure. You know? So this year we've created a leadership team and we're actively coaching them on how to be leaders cool. in the team. It's making huge difference. They're, they're so empowered, um, to lead within the team. Whereas before it felt like sometimes it was always coming from the coaching staff. So, yeah. you know, we've just, we've kind of been taking each year one at a time and saying, okay, how can we be better? What do we need to work on? Um, and just, you know, working hard at that process. It's been really, really fun, but, um, it's just, you know, whenever we're in the gym and people come in, they're like, wow, the energy is so great in here. I'm like, that's not by accident. Yeah. It's it's not fake and inauthentic energy. It's, it's real. They want to be here. They're excited, but they also really want to win and they want to work hard. That's the shift I'm starting to see this year is how bad they want it. Mm. Um, and they're willing to just grind a little bit harder, um, to, in order to achieve that. So it's just, it's just exciting. Yeah. And I think it's infectious, right? Like when you have a coaching staff or a couple, you know, seniors or leaders who are truly passionate about it and it's not fake and it's not just words, it's actual actions. Like that's very contagious throughout your program. And I feel as though the best programs I've seen, whether it's club or elite level or whether it's in colleges, they have leaders or people inside the program that genuinely really model the actions that they want to see performed. And like, it's really easy to say like, we're going to build a great culture and do this. And then all of a sudden rubber meets the road and you're like, eh, it doesn't quite happen. So maybe it's a hat tip to you, but also just like the value of role modeling is crucial, you know, because everyone says everything until it actually comes turn to do the work and go to do marketing or spend the extra hours to do this or really to have a good conversation with recruits. Like that's not easy. That's not easy at all. Yeah. Yep. And that, I mean, that's always my goal, especially in recruiting is to make sure that what I'm selling and what I'm, what I'm saying on phone calls or on official visits is matching what they see in the gym. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a good sign of just strong culture. Um, and just what you're saying about, about leaders and the team, you know, I tell our leaders, it's not just about saying the right things, but it's about following it up with action. And, and I think the hardest thing for college students is accountability. Right. And, um, not, I think gymnasts in general are really good at holding themselves accountable, but it's really difficult for them to hold each other accountable. Sure. Um, and so we've, we've really honed in on that this year. It's like, what does that sound like? What does that look like? Mm. Is it always going to be warm and fuzzy? No, it sometimes <laughs> can sting a little bit, but you know, that's, I, I tell them that's what we do as coaches all the time is we're constantly holding you guys accountable to the standard. And that's really all it is. It's not, it's not mean, it's not disrespectful. It's just realigning the standard of the team, mm. Um, mm. teaching that and really even just helping them talk through it. Like, okay, let's role play. Yeah. You know, you see this happening. What are you going to say to your teammate? And let's let's talk it out. And so we've really been focusing on that. It's just made all the difference this year. Yeah. And back to kind of something you said before, which is like you're in October, right? Which is like this kind of under the radar, but like the most work is being done. I personally find that a lot of those very small 1%, the 15 minutes here when you don't want to go to training or that you, when you really don't want to go do weights after a long practice, like it is the actions and the grit mentality of like, listen, we really would rather not do this, but like, this is what it takes to be successful. 
and, and a lot of programs that I talk to, it's like everyone is doing the same thing from December to wherever. They're generally doing the same approach, but it's what's happening in July, in August, when the beach is right there, and then October <laughs> when classes are busy. Like those are separators, man. They really are. But that's where a team falls back to their level of value, right? Which is like, okay, this is what we stand for. We're going to do it anyways, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And then with that, I think the other thing that's really exciting too is it's exciting, but it's also interesting to see is like, I think maybe with the NCAA, the college athletes have absorbed a lot of the Olympians across multiple colleges, but I'm, I'm noticing a lot of like, it's a very different personality at certain um, colleges, right? You have some colleges that are maybe more, they're all working hard. Let's say that, but it's like, some are more laid back. They're more just like dancey, fun, chill. Some are more like all business and it's very much show up and we have something to do. I'm wondering if one, you think that that's accurate or not. But two is like, is that something you, you promote or is like you recruit a personality type that mirrors maybe what's already there? Um, I do think that's true. I think that, you know, sometimes programs develop a certain like personality of the yeah. program. Um, and we're probably thinking of the same ones, but <laughs> and I think, you know, that just kind of happens naturally because mm -hmm. of, I think it starts probably with the coaching staff and just, yeah. Um, how the coaching staff approaches the program. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that we tell recruits all the time and is my goal every single day is to have a really good combination of hard work, discipline, and grit, mm. but pair that with like joy and fun and yeah. enjoyment of the process because I don't think you have to have one or the other. I think you can have both. And when you have both, to me, that's when like the real magic happens in gymnastics. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's, that's our goal every single day. I, I truly believe if anyone walked into the doors of our gym, that's, that's generally what they would, would notice is that, you know, and we hear that from recruits all the time to come watch practice. They're like, you know what? It just, you're getting work done, but it's like the music is loud. It's fun. And it's yeah. like, and I'm like, great. That's, that is my goal all the time. <laughs> um, and, and granted not every day is sure. really fun. You know, sometimes it's just, it's harder and we just got to work through and be resilient. Um, but you know, I, I want it to be a combination of both for my athletes. And I think they deserve that. And it's, it's up to them. It really, I tell them, it's like, you guys are the ones that make practice fun. It's with your mindset and your mm. energy with the process that creates that it's not, you know, it might, I might say it, but it really is you guys that create that, that, that attitude and that energy about our program. Yeah. And I'd be risk, remiss maybe to double click on this and go deeper. Cause I think that is the ultimate goal, particularly in the club level who looks at college is like, man, that looks like the dream. You can like be super productive and be have expectations, but still enjoy your process. Like, do you design that as like sometimes like, Hey, listen, we're all business now. We're going to go for it, turn this light switch on. And then we can kind of relax and do something else or like a fun team building activity. Is it like toggling back and forth? Is it what you said, which is like music's okay. And fun's okay. As long as we're productive or like, I'm, I'm curious if that's organic or if that's built by you and the coaching staff. Um, I think it's a little bit of both, you yeah. know, you will, like, for example, today, you know, we, um, once a week we try to do, we, we split the team in half and we have them compete for like a stick game, you know, and I know yeah. a lot of programs do that. And so we, we try to do that at the beginning of practice because I want them to feel like that competitive fire and they have fun with it. They go crazy when they get points and stick. And then, you know, I want them to take that into the whole practice and feel that, that kind of energy. So in that way, it's kind of like we, we work on it as a coaching staff and figure out the plan. Um, but it's also like, it's not when we have an inner squad, okay, music off serious, let's yeah. you know, be focused. It's like, okay, let's be focused. But like, if you're on the sidelines, bring the energy, bring, yeah. you know, the enthusiasm and, um, you know, I try to just instruct them when I feel like they need it to, to bring both at the same time. Mm. And that's what they want to do in a meet anyway. So if sure. it feels different in a meet, then we're not doing what we need to do in the gym. Yeah. And kind of building on top of that is, is how important is it to kind of either cultivate events or things outside of the gym? Because my personal experience with college and I hear this mothers is that you spend so much time in the gym, so yeah. hyper focused on performing and competitive edge that sometimes you get you lose the the ability to build relationships that aren't connected to gymnastics and scores and routines and stuff. So are you guys trying to do things outside of the gym regularly or is it just kind of like you meet up and, and have lunch or things like that? We do. We try to make a really intentional effort, whether it's, you know, we're doing a community service event yeah. or um, we're just, you know, having dinner um, as a team. We try to mix that in at some point. And I know they do, the girls do a lot of stuff on their own as well. Mm. This year we started something called families where I split them into three different families. And um, once a week they have to get together with their family and um, just like hang out. But they also have to talk about a topic that they randomly choose out of a, mm. a fishbowl. Um, something, nice. it's, cool. the topics are all things that like impact the team and something that we should be talking 
about as far as culture. Mm. Um, but I love that just because, you know, we can spend so much time in here having team meetings and, and talking about that. But when they really get to just hang out and then, yeah you know, get into it as little families, it's, it's a lot more productive. So we try to be intentional about planning stuff outside the gym, but at the same time, they, they're busy. They've got yeah. class and tutoring. And, um, sometimes I say, you know, if we have a day off, like guys, just chill, yeah. just chill and do something that's going to help you like be refreshed the next day, whether that's, you know, going somewhere, going to a pumpkin patch or whatever, or just like hanging out, watching Netflix, like do whatever it is you need to do to chill so that you can be refreshed for the week. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think that is something notoriously uh, college athletes, but also like aspiring college athletes struggle with is like viewing, turning things off as a benefit, right? Like the gymnastics mentality is like, I have to do more. I have to study more. I have to get this extra thing. And it's like, sometimes it's not a, a productive yield on your investment when you're like, you're going so hard all the time that like, maybe what you need is Netflix in an early bed. You know, mm -hmm. maybe what you need is like a timeout and dinner with your family that has nothing to do with gymnastics. And yeah. I feel like, man, that's such a hard message to, to get through to younger athletes sometimes is, is the ability to de-shift. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I try to tell the team, like, it's going to look different for everybody. You have to figure out what it is that re-energizes you. Um, sometimes it is Netflix. Sometimes it's not, sometimes, you know, yeah, yeah. they got to figure that out for themselves. And another thing we've, we've worked into the program this year is, um, we're doing some meditation and mindfulness training. Yep. Um, and they love it. It's, it's a great, and I tell them this is not just a once a week thing that we do in here. This is a tool. This is something you can learn how to do and then take into mm. your, your everyday life. Cause you know, with, with this generation and with human beings in general right now, there's, there's so much, you know, yeah. stimuli and just things yeah. going on. It's to be, to be able to like calm your brain down and um, really just sit with your thoughts and breathe. Um, it's hard and it takes, it takes effort <laughs> trying to, teach them that that's a great tool they can use in their everyday life. Yeah. And a lot of these things you're saying true, I think are, is important kind of pull this message out here, which is like, of course, these things are competitively beneficial, right? To teach yeah. people how to manage themselves or their time or have time away. But like, you're trying to develop a human who's going to be happy on the other side of gymnastics, you know, will end in a high level competitive, maybe you'll do adult gymnastics. But like, generally speaking, you're going to move on to a different chapter of your life. And like, you know, you want to make sure that you're healthy and happy and you have skill sets that you can take with you for a tough job interview or a hard conversation with your spouse someday or something like that. Like, that's really what I think I love so much about college gymnastics is it provides an opportunity for you to build skill sets that then you take on for your career, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's my goal with this, this whole thing. And nine times out of 10, when, when, um, student athletes will ask me to meet and they want to talk about, their gymnastics and you know if they're struggling on a particular event we end up not even talking about gymnastics we ended up talking about you know what's going on outside mm. of gymnastics that's affecting their their mental game and just their happiness and because i i'm i'm aware that if you're not in a great place mentally um the gymnastics will follow and vice versa yeah. so um so yeah, nine times out of 10, we end up not even talking about the gymnastics. <laughs> yeah. Again, another important thing that I think is sometimes, unfortunately, not really, uh, I guess, uh, validated enough, which is like so much outside the gym affects what happens in the gym and college mm -hmm. athletes is crazy, right? Because you have school and you're busy with school and stuff, but at the club level too, it's like, sometimes it's just like the smallest things of sleep and tests and stuff. And you think it's like about gymnastics and you're like, why aren't you doing this? Or like, what's going wrong? But it's like, listen, I just, I slept six hours and I had a bio test and like, I'm just exhausted, you know? And like, I think that that's undervalued sometimes as a coach is like you compartmentalize that. Like it's always about gymnastics, but like there's so much about the human that changes what happens inside the gym or a meet, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah totally. And I mean, the hard lesson there and something that there, I feel like is really a balance is figuring out, you know, we, we want to know what's going on outside the gym. We want to know the context right. behind it. Right. We want to prevent injuries. So having, you know, the, the, that information of, if, of tests and sleep and, you know, struggle with relationships outside of the gym is, is all important. Mm. Um, while simultaneously we want to, we want to coach them up to really know how to compartmentalize and, um, obviously be smart and know when it's safe to push and unsafe to push, but, you know, leaving, you know, outside stuff outside of the gym to really just come in and be with your team and work towards the goal. So it's really a balance there. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's a great, that's a great thing that we tried to teach over their four years is, um, is how to just be resilient through all of that and what to leave outside, what to communicate, things like sure. that. Yeah. And on that too, right. It's the eternal struggle between like, as a coach flexibility and then like accountability, right. Which mm -hmm. is like, okay, you have a lot of tests. Your teachers just dumped three things in one week. That's out of your control. And like, we'll, we'll try to make this work for the weekend versus, you know, you're choosing a lifestyle outside of the gym that's sleeping real minimal. And maybe you're not taking care of yourself. Like, okay, well, this is a conversation for like, we need to deal with this. Right. And I think that that's a hard 
you know, balance the strike, like you said, which is like, okay, this is actually on you to like, we'll give you resources, but like, you need to be responsible for sleeping yeah. and eating well and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's yeah. tough. It's a tough back and forth. Yeah, it is. And, and then on that, I think not, not on that related to it, but related to that is like the next year for you guys is probably quite exciting given uh, the last few years. And so are there things in particular that you're like, particularly like looking forward to this year? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to all of it. Right? <laughs> all um, of it. Yeah. yeah, I just each year we get a little bit better. We get a little more competitive. Um, I, I really see this team making an even bigger jump this year. Mm. Um, you know, obviously Nora transferring in from UCLA and, um, you know, she's going to be a strong all arounder for us and really a leader competitive competitively. Um, I think that's going to have a really big impact, not just on our, on our scores, but, but really the confidence of the whole team. And I see, I see that happening in practice. Um, so I'm excited to see the way that translates, you know, in competition, I think. We've done a lot of good work and gotten better each year. And and our team even recognized the next step for us is just being a little bit more fierce in competition, mm. really just being able to translate what we do in practice to the, to the competition floor. So I'm really excited about that. I feel like they're so driven this year, more than I've ever seen them um, as a team. So I, I, I have a hard time believing that's not going to uh, impact how we do. Um, yeah. It's just a matter of us really making sure we're being intentional every day and preventing injuries and staying healthy. I think that's, you know, every coach tries to do that as much yeah, as they yeah. can. Um, but I just, you know, I think the sky's the limit for this team and they've got, they've got big goals and I'm excited to see how they do. I feel like you're just secretly recruiting all your friends and best connections from all over the world into sure. Fayetteville, you know, just building your army of like wonderful people. I know it seems that way. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It's just, it's kind of happened that way. I feel like a head coach's job is to surround themselves with a staff that complements, you mm. know, their strengths and weaknesses. Um, and I really feel like my staff does that. And, um, I think we have the best staff in the world. Yeah. And again, not to, not to, I mean, cl clearly to have to be, but like, there's a, there's an infectiousness to being around people who want the same thing and they're driven. And so people want to surround themselves with common friends, you know, that are, that are motivated, that are doing things. It's really hard to get the engine going on that really tough day when, you know, the people around you maybe are like, nah, yeah, I'll kind of get to it when I get to it. Like you, you need that kind of like that energy around you at all times, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's contagious, you know, student athletes can feel it. And I think that, that all of us being, um, so motivated and, and younger really is, mm. it's, um, I think that has a huge impact on the growth of this program because they can feel that every day when we come in, we're excited and we're, we're pumped up and we're, we're goal driven as a staff. Yeah. I, I wonder about this is when you first got the head coaching position, did you have a, a mini chip on your shoulder? Because people are like, ah, oh, she's so young and this is never going to work. Well, were you like, yeah, all right, like, let's do this thing. You know, was that a competitive itch for you? Or like, did you not even care? Um, maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, I think there was a small part of me that was like, I know I can, I can prove these people wrong and yeah. they just don't, they don't know me and, sure. and what I'm capable of. And so, um, I didn't really focus on it too much. I definitely saw the, you know, the comments and heard from a lot of people like, Oh, did, you know, can she really do this? Is she really ready? But, um, you know, I, I was really secure in, in myself and what I know I, I was really confident. I think I even said this in my job, job interview, mm. I might not know how to do everything as a head coach, but I, I know I can work hard and figure it out. Like I know mm. that yeah. and um, using just the people I have surrounding me in the athletic department and the mentors that I have, I just, I was really confident I could just figure it out. And that's what I continue to do. Um, and I try to say that in a way where it doesn't sound like, oh, I yeah. can, I can do it all. But really, I think that's a great lesson for anybody is just, if you've got that confidence, um, not, not that you know it all, but that you can figure it out and you can work right. hard to figure it out. I think that's, that's a really, um, a big strength. Yeah. And kind of to partner on that too, which is what you said already, which is the combination of uh, I'm confident I can figure it out. If I don't know, comma, I'm willing to work with other people and surround myself with people who maybe have an expertise here or a different perspective. Or, you know, I think that's a, a, a very clear hallmark of a leader is someone who not only has a skill set and understands it, but is willing to admit when they don't know and they need to get help, or they're willing to say like, no, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out though. You know, I think that's that man, or maybe it's ego or maybe it's whatever, but some people really struggle to say like, you know what, I actually need some help here and I, I need to find someone who's useful. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's why we get to have a coaching staff because right, right, right. can't, can't do it all, can't know it all. And, um, like I said, that's why I try to compliment my, my coaching staff with people that have different strengths than me, but making sure that we all are on the same page as far as our philosophies and, mm. our, and our goals and our mindset. But you know, my personality is very different than Chris's, which is very different <laughs> than Kyla's. Um, yeah. And that I see that as a strength. 
Yeah, which goes back to serving all the needs of the type of personalities your athletes have, right? There's 18, 20 people on a team. They're not all going to be directly in line with like your motivation style or what you think. So I think that's that's important to have a blend of coaches around you that is different. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. not the same echo chamber. Yeah, exactly. And then the last thing I'd like to chat on, which I think someone would get upset with me if I don't talk about is people that are prospective college or Arkansas, you know, looking up at the the wonderful development of NCAAs. I feel as though uh, it's sometimes a little bit of a, a very overwhelming process to understand, you know, like, okay, like, what should I do? Is it, is it skill based? Is it recruiting trips? Is it and obviously don't speak anywhere beyond you can't but like, I'm curious your thoughts of, of what someone can do to put themselves in a good position to try to enter junior year, or senior year with landing somewhere that's exciting for them. It's a good fit too. Yeah, I think, you know, obvious, the obvious thing is that, you know, you've got to be, um, you've got to have the skill set and the gymnastics to right. be able to contribute to a program. Um, but, you know, for us, you know, you know, just generally, I would say that more, even as important as the gymnastics, just the character and the personality right. and the, the wanting to win and be a part of something really special and bigger than yourself is something that, that we really tune in and, and look for. Um, and so, so that, and then my, my advice to, to any recruit is always just go where you feel like you connect with the, the people and the coaching mm. staff, um, mm. because, you know, you'll go on all, all sorts of visits and you'll see that everybody has a, a great facility. Everybody has, you know, great academic support and academic opportunities. And that is going to be pretty much consistent across the yeah. board, but the people and the coaching staff are going to be the ones that dictate your experience more than any of those things. And I always say, you know, when you're having a really hard day, um, you know, a pretty mm. locker room is not going to make you feel better. <laughs> um, it's not going to be the stuff. It's going to yeah. be the people that you're with. And, um, and you're going to want people who will not only support you and love you, um, but also will challenge you and push you. And I think right. that second part is really important um, because, you know, you think about a family, you know, everybody says our, our team is like a family, um, but family is sometimes going to tell you like it is and yeah. say, hey, you know, straight, yeah. let's go, let's pick it up, people. And um, I think that's important to recognize just especially for any recruit in, in any sport and any, you know wherever wherever they are just making sure you really focus on what people do you want to surround yourself with because that's going to dictate majority of your experience yeah not that many gymnastics have a problem gymnasts have a problem with this but like obviously level setting your expectations and, and looking at their skill level and being like that match me do i have those skills that competitive level but also like being a good person goes a long way you know like i can think of a lot of situations whether it's my own team in college or elsewhere where like we had people who are phenomenally good at gymnastics but man were they tough to be around and my coaches were like i'm sorry like like they, I remember get one, one guy getting cut because he was phenomenal at gymnastics, but he was very much just a mood bringer downer. I don't know how to describe it anyway else. He was just like, it's tough to be around because he's always yeah. thinks he's the best and he doesn't go out of his way to help people. And my coach is like, listen, I don't care if you have a, at that time, like a huge 15 score, like you're not helping the team. And so we're going to have to let you go. And I remember all of us being like, whoa, you know what I mean? But like, he was very much let go for his character, not for his skill level. And I think that's valuable too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't want to keep you anymore. I know you're very busy and I appreciate the time you had here. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, I'll just part it with, is there anything else that you want to mention for Arkansas or for kind of where people can find you this year or exciting meets you have coming up? I think that people should check out for. Oh my gosh. That's a, that's a big question. I think I could talk for an hour, but, um, <laughs> podcast yeah, part two. Know, we're really looking forward to this season. You know, last, last season we had one, one meet for the first time ever in our basketball arena in Bud Walton, um, where we packed the house with 10,000 fans. And this year we actually are doing two in Bud Walton nice. arena um, versus Florida and versus Minnesota. So nice. um, we've got just exciting things on the horizon and, you know, going back to just recruiting for a minute, I think, um, you know, building buzz around Arkansas has been our goal and mm -hmm. really not just building buzz, but really, showing people, you know, what we have here and how great it is and, and the awesome people we have surrounding us. So, um, you know, one of the, one of the biggest experiences we have with recruits is they, they come here on visits and they go, Oh, I didn't realize it was like this. And like, yeah. you know, I think so. Um, that's, that's always one thing I, I want to mention about recruiting is, um, just, you know, people being able to understand and really do their research and, and know just how amazing it is here and um and just all the great people that we have surrounding us and we're on the we're on the climb on the build and we're, we're pretty much unstoppable right now so i'm excited to see where we go in the future yeah i remember you saying that you know it was like a a, a, hidden, a hidden gem right in arkansas yeah. you were like this is a wonderful place and i guess that's probably important to as a third layer which is like yeah skills and then being a but i was like you should like the college you should have good academic you know and i'm sure that that's 
crucial research you must do before you just say the gymnastics, you know? Yeah, it is a hidden gem. And we always say it's America's best kept secret mm. um, that it's the hidden gem, but I'm I'm announcing the secret. So <laughs> <laughs> no longer, no <laughs> longer. Does does. Now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, this will be out probably in a month, right? As season's kicking off. So yeah, it'll be exciting to share with everybody. Awesome. Thanks for having me.